Hey guys, so welcome to episode 121 of the Knitting Expat podcast and just make sure I've got my notes. Um, hi, so welcome. Today is Thursday the 26th of April. It's been about a month since I last did a proper sit down podcast. I did record an episode a couple of weeks ago, which is a bit more off the cuff and um, I did also post a vlog recently as well. So. Um, there have been there has been some activity on my account, but um, this is the first proper sit down podcast I've had a chance to do in a while. Um, I won't necessarily be going over the same um, finished objects. Actually, I won't be going over the same finished objects as I spoke about in the last episode, even though I didn't have show notes for the last episode, um, number one twenty. So if you do have any questions about anything I had in that episode, then please do. Uh, send me a message or leave me a comment and I will try and answer that for you. Um, but there will be show notes for this episode. Okay, so um, before we get started, my name's Mina. I'm not sure if I said that already, but um, if I didn't, that's what it is. And uh, you can find me online as Mina Philip on Ravelry Knitting Expat on Instagram. And um, you can find the podcast group as Knitting Expat Podcast. And you can find um, show notes for this and all previous episodes at knittingexpat.wordpress.com. And you can find links to everything below this video on YouTube as well. So you should be able to find whatever it is you are looking for. I do sell my patterns on Ravelry as well as in the design shop is Knitting Expat Designs. And again, that should be linked below as well. Okay, spiel done. <laughs> I hope you... Um, enjoy what you see and uh, thank you for coming back if you are a returning viewer and if you are new thank you so much for giving me a go okay so we have two uh well let's see, yeah we have one new pattern that's been released since i last spoke with you guys and that is the double dutch cardigan which is a cute little kiddies cardigan and i already have plans for an adult version so uh stay tuned for more information about that i'm hoping to have the adult size version ready to release sometime um this coming autumn at the beginning of autumn if possible so we'll see um and then what else did i want to mention uh yeah so for the format for today we're going to go over some finished objects some works in progress um acquisitions some knit along news and giveaways and prizes etc um the q a thread i have neglected the q a thread for far too long so i'm going to go through and answer some of the questions in there and then just round off with a bit of a what's been going on lately kind of review um, and hopefully Layla should be sleeping, but she might wake up early. She's not been sleeping particularly great lately um, during the day. Her naps haven't been particularly great, but um, so if she does wake up early, we might have a little co-host towards the end of the episode. We will see. Um, okay, so let's just jump right in. Finished objects. Uh, this was a work in progress last time I spoke with you guys, but I didn't have it to show you either. Uh, no, sorry, I finished this last time, but I'd literally just put it to soak, so um, I couldn't show it to you. But this was the... I'll get this to show up. There we go. This is the pair of socks that I'd knit for the sock club, so I don't want to show you the pattern, which is why I'm holding it, kind of funny. Um, out of Wollenbein Yarns in the Mooncaster colourway. This is on the footsie base, so it's a superwash BFL nylon blend, and it's brilliant. I've got another two, two pairs of socks out, out of this yarn from Von Vine, from Kristen, and they hold up beautifully being washed, I think. I'm trying to get the colour to show up accurately, somewhat. There we go. That's a bit better. Sorry, the lighting's really funny today. It's quite a miserable day. It's raining right now. Um, let me see if I move this a little bit that better uh, anyway it's a beautiful color and this current camera angle lighting situation is not doing it justice at all and I can't really spread it out and show it any clearer because I don't want to give the pattern away so I'm sorry about that um, the next pair of socks I have to show you I think this was a work in progress last time I spoke with you guys but I didn't have it on hand to show you either so um, that is this pair of socks this is yarn by yarn ink I do have the tag here. Ooh. By Yarn Ink. And this is in the We're All Mad Here colorway, which is the February 2017 Yarn of the Month Club. It's on the Tough Sock Base, which is an 8020 Superwash Merino Nylon. So this was a gift um, skein. These will be some gift socks. I'm not sure who for yet. 
but I've knit them up at my generic sort of gift size, gift sock size for women, so this will be for probably one of my friends. So yeah, that's that pair. Just a really nice, variegated, speckled green pair, pair of socks. And the last pair of socks I have to show you today are these ones. I knit another pair of what will be the Ripple socks, which I knit for my mum. Um, so it's my own design, which I knit for my mum for her Mother's Day socks. It's just some fun cable texture running down the front of the sock. And these are actually for my brother. This is using Ryberry yarns. This was actually in a knit crate, a sock box uh, that came. So this is by Ryberry yarns. It's an 85-15 superwash merino nylon blend. Um, River Rock is the colorway, is the information. And uh, yeah, so I decided to knit my brother another pair of socks to replace the ones that he's worn through, which if you watched the last episode, you'll have heard about. And I did the same thing as I did with that one. I added in a slip stitch sort of mock heel, I guess, as it were. So I was still knitting in the rounds. So it's not a true, it's not a heel flap or anything. Still knitting in the round, just did slip stitches on the, like did a heel flap pattern on the back of the leg. And then I continued that over the mini heel flap adjustment, which I do on all of my socks now. And then did my German short row heel, which I actually didn't stock in at this time because with the slip stitch heel effect, it would have looked funny to have a garter heel there, I think. Um, this just looks more in keeping with the, with the feel at this point. I feel, I feel I felt like that would suit it better, so that's what I did. And um, there's a pair of socks here. I haven't actually given these to him yet because I wanted to show you guys first. So there's that. And all of these socks were knit on 2.25 millimeter needles, either Chiagu's or High High Sharps. And those are my needles of choice. Then we have a couple of hats to show you. So these are part of, these will be part of the New York Hat Club. Um, not club, sorry, New York Hat Collection. Uh, with pat and the patterns are based on the stitch patterns in the New York Sock Collection. So I've used the same uh, stitch patterns, but some of them I've changed them up a little bit or how it looks will look a bit different. Um, so yeah, some of them will look very similar. Some of them will look a little bit more different. So. Um, this first one here is the uh, Times Square hat. So if you're familiar with the Times Square socks, you will recognize that. Um, what well, looks like a cable, but it's actually a mock cable. You're not doing any actual cabling stitches at all. Um, this entire collection is being knit out of Green Mountain spinnery, yarn, spinnery yarns. So that is what these are out of. And this one, the Avenue, the Times Square, sorry, the Times Square hat is out of their DK base, which is called Music. And um, this is in the Purple Rain colorway. So again, this isn't showing up, the color isn't showing up particularly great. There we go, that's better. And uh, yeah, so this is like a mock cable effect. There we go. Um, it looks a bit weird with my hair like this right now, but you get the idea. And uh, yeah, it's a nice sort of like beanie style. Obviously you can make it slouchy if you want it slouchier, but uh, because these skeins are actually only uh, two ounce skeins, <coughs> they're not full 100 gram skeins. So um, you wouldn't be able to get, um, I mean you could have done, I could have done this one slightly slouchier in this size because I did have a little bit left over but it wouldn't have been enough to do a fold brim or to make it super slouchy or both. So, um, so yeah, so there's that to bear in mind if you are using the Green Mountain Spinnery wool and you want to make it slouchy or you want to do a fold brim, which the instructions for the fold brim will come with the hats in the patterns. Um, it's just the samples don't have the fold brims. So if you did want to do that and you wanted to make it extra slouchy, you add a pom-pom out of the same yarn, stuff like that, you would probably want to have two skeins of these uh, or buy these yarns. So that's the Times Square one. And this was knit out of, uh, sorry, knit on <laughs> 3.5 and 3 point, sorry, and four millimeter needles. And then this one is the Q Train. This is the Q Train hat. Sorry, I was looking at this because it was in my whips section on my show notes and uh, this was a whip until last night so it is now a finished object. I haven't actually blocked this one yet so you can see it a little bit. It needs a good blocking. And um, 
and yeah this one's got some pretty rapid decreases on the top again because of the amount of yarn in these skeins um there will be an option in the pattern if you want to do uh the decreases that are less rapid these are pretty rapid decreases at the top which gives this nice little like scrunched in effect but again some people don't like that so there will be an option for something else and this is the q train pattern as you can see this one looks quite different than the socks i've sort of played around with how you work the stitch pattern to create a more sort of like vertical chevron effect which i just thought that's a fun play on the whole um whole thing um so yeah really really quick knits honestly for me hats as quickly as i knit socks hats are the ultimate quick knit uh, as far as i'm concerned <laughs> okay and that one was knit on four uh, sorry 3.75 and 4.5 millimeter needles so the smaller size needles for the hats would be for the brim and then you'd go up to the larger size for the main body of the hat um okay moving on to works in progress i don't actually have a whole lot to show you i do have a, a pair of socks surprise surprise and this is i always forget to talk about project bags that aren't my own so i'm going to make try to make more of an effort to do so uh, we'll just talk about project packs in general. I'm not very good at that. Um, this is by da Daisy Girl and Company. Um, this was sent to me uh, along with another one for a prize, which I've given away um, last year at some point, and I really like using it. It's nice having the clear vinyl on the front so you can see your projects. Um, and it's a really good size for a pair of socks or any other sort of small accessories. So this is a lovely... Uh, pair of socks again these will be gifts as well gift socks as well I'm sort of um, my gift pile of socks has somewhat dwindled recently because my mum I gave a bunch to my mum to take to Iran um, I should mention my mum went to Iran recently for just for uh, two to three weeks to visit family and stuff she hadn't been in a few years so um, she was due a visit and I sent a few socks for some of my aunts with her as well so um, my uh, gift pile of socks has somewhat uh, been drastically reduced of late so i've added i'm adding to it again this yarn is by stress knits who i don't believe is dying at the moment i know she's pregnant so congratulations stacy but um so yeah it was dyed by stacy of stress knits yarn and she does have the stress knits podcast again uh she hasn't been podcasting much recently either i'm assuming for the same reasons but this is on her favorite sock base it's an 80 20 superwash merino nylon 400 yards and the colorway is called your dad you're in a cult which i believe is a my favorite murder reference my favorite murder is an audio podcast i don't actually listen to it myself but um i know enough people who do listen to it to to recognize the references every now and again when they pop up and um yeah so that's this colorway it's funny because in the skein it looks like a very pink or in the ball even it looks like a very pink uh sort of colorway and it is fairly pink i think but it's when it's knit up it doesn't feel as overwhelmingly it feels more like a purple pink and it works really well with the dark greens and the other colors in the skein as well so it actually feels like a very sort of muted slightly more grungy spring colorway which i quite liked actually i thought it was really fun and um something a bit different um it's always amazing how different yarn can look when it's knit up compared to what it looks like in a skein or in a ball so yeah there's that then everything else that i have to show you is not actually a proper work in progress it's either a swatch or something i'm about to cast on so uh, with the socks i just showed you as you can see um I'm, i didn't actually mention again i knit all my socks on 2.25 millimeter needles if i use anything different i will tell you but um but yeah so with those ones i'm right now i'm ready to do the heels on those i've done the mini heel flaps and i've just need to do my german short row heel on them so um just got the foot left to go after that i'll probably turn the heels either later tonight or yeah probably tonight and um <coughs> tomorrow either tomorrow evening or saturday morning we're going to be heading down to perry's parents for the weekend so um I'll probably have those for car knitting then I also want to cast on another pair of socks because I'm probably not going to take too long to finish those ones the other ones that I've shown you I'm going to cast on another pair of socks because Saturday night Perry and I are going to go see the new Avengers film Infinity War at the cinema near Perry's parents 
So we've already booked our tickets and everything, but I suddenly realized that those socks I'm working on, if I work on them on the, in the car on the way down, there won't be enough knitting left to do on the foot for me to take a cinema knitting, because then I'd constantly be worried about, having, by knit, about knitting too far. So um, I'm probably gonna cast on another pair of socks um, to take the, as cinema knitting. So this yarn, again, the purples are not showing up very well today at all, blues, purples. Um, okay, it's a little bit more washed out than it actually is, but you get the idea. It's like this dark, rich purple, blues, and greens. I had a bit of trouble winding this skein up, if you can tell from this um, little thing. Um, but I got there, it's fine. And this is by Vessel Yarn Co. And the dyer behind this is Ash, who's really, really lovely. And uh, we've chatted quite a bit on Instagram and through emails and stuff. And this is in her colorway Unicorn. 426 yards in 100 grams. And this will be a pair of socks for Perry. So these will be cast on and knit at the cinema. Um, what else? The next thing I am working on, which I literally just started about 20 minutes before I sat down to podcast, um, was this swatch. And I've already actually swatched with this yarn. This yarn is by Lamdaloon Yarn Company. And this is in her throat punch colorway, I wanna say. It's either throat punch, or, yeah, it's throat punch. I don't think it's punch throat. Throat punch colorway, which is this really lovely, super detailed, um, variegated colorway which I absolutely loved. And she sent four skeins of this to me as for yarn support for a design, specifically for, I had an idea for a children's garment. Um, and I did originally swatch with this already, and I do still have that swatch. I just can't remember what needle size I used. I forgot to like put knots in the tail or put yarn overs in the swatch to let me know what size needles I used for it. And it was so long ago that I swatched for it that I don't really think it's uh, relevant to use the same swatch again. So I'm just re-swatching and I also want to, and I swatched in stock in it and I want to swatch with a couple of different texture patterns to see if um, there is a texture that I want to incorporate into this or not. I just want to see how it what looks on the yarn as well before I'm making decisions. So um, I want to work on that today, get some swatching done and try out a couple of different textures I think as well, texture stitches to see what would work best. If anything, I might change my mind and decide not to do anything. but. There's that, so I have that yarn waiting and ready to go. And um, so yeah, once I've done the swatch, washed and dried it, then I can sit down and work out the maths to then get started, essentially. Um, then the next work in progress that I have to show you, which is a similar sort of situation, the swatch type thing, but it also sort of merges in with um, acquisitions. So, I uh, was contacted by Kelsey from Primrose Yarn Company about whether or not I wanted to take part in this collaboration that she's work she's putting together. I said, absolutely, I would love to. I'm not allowed to share any details about this collaboration or what it's for, but um, at least not yet. But I can tell you what I'm working on and I can show you the yarn and I can show you the project. She said that that's fine. I can show uh, the work in progress and things like that. I just, she just doesn't want me to say what it's for. So I figured that's fair enough. Um, you know, as long as everyone's on the same page, then it's fine. And um, and yeah, so I will show you the yarn first. How about that? I will show you, and if I can hopefully remember, I, I know the order, it's just whether or not I can remember all the names. Um, actually, you know what, let me just grab the tags, because then it'll be easier. I believe these are all colorways that you can currently get from her shop. So first up we have, uh, these are all on the same base, it's on her Margot base, which is a two ply fingering weight, superwash merino cashmere nylon blend. And these actually come in 150 gram skeins, so they are 595 yards per skein. These are pretty big skeins, pretty chunky, pretty big. Um, so this first one here is from her regular lineup of colorways and it's called When Legos Attack. So it's a very sort of, it's a light gray base with speckles of blues and greens um, throughout. Again, it's not showing up particularly great. I don't know why my lighting's so weird. Usually lighting up here is pretty good. There we go. Then next up we have Crime of Passion, and this is from her Rose, Rose Gold collection, which I believe the Rose Gold collection you can only get directly from the Primrose website. You can't buy it through any of her stockists. So this next one is called Crime of Passion, which is 
a slightly darker grey with very similar sort of greens and blues speckles and then there's a couple, few other colours in the speckling as well. You can get a better look at that. Um, and then third up we have the Picket Line or the Parade again from the Rose Gold collection and this is a darker grey even with there we go, you can see the speckles there with all different colours in the speckling. So more of that blue and green, but also some purples and other colours popping up as well. And then fourth, which is also from the Rose, Rose Gold collection, is From London With Love. And so this one is a sort of a dusky purple base. And there we go, again with very similar sort of speckling throughout. And uh, finally, from her regular collection again, is uh, Morticia, which is just a really, really dark uh, grey purple. So this is the set of yarns. And I actually have two skeins of the Morticia. Ooh, I'll explain that in a second, if I can line this up without making a mess. Um, there we go, kind of. <laughs> Okay, so these are the five colorways that I'm going to be using. As you can see, they kind of, they actually blend really well with each other, other than the Morticia, which is like quite a bit darker, but that's okay, because that's kind of intentional. Um, I wanted kind of a fade, but um, a very gradual fade. Like, I wanted it to be very subtle, and I, it was either, it was either going to have to be super subtle and kind of like nicely blend into each other, or it would have to be like really stark and like color blocked almost. So we ended up going for this really subtle sort of gradiated effect. And I'm going to pop that down gently. And what this is going to be is a sweater, like a pullover, which I'm really into right now. So it's going to be another pullover, similar sort of shape to my Parisian Dreams sweater. So if you've seen that one, you'll know what I mean. It's sort of like a drop shoulder effect, boxy-ish, not too boxy, but boxy-ish so with a bit of ease. And it's just my sort of it's a shape I really like wearing right now, so um, it's kind of what I'm gravitating towards designing. So that's what this will probably be. Like I said, I have two skeins of the Morticia because this is going to be these. Um, so like the gradiated color effect is only going to be on the body part, and the sleeves will all be solid in the Morticia colorway. So this will be used for the bottom. Um, it'll go from light to dark at the bottom and then also for the sleeves as well So I wasn't entirely sure if one skein would be enough exactly for all of that um, So so yes, yeah, so that's the yarn that I wanted to show you um, And these are the swatches that I've done so this is the order in which it will go in so it will start with the lightest at the top and then moving down to the darker colors and you can see how especially those first four colours really blend together quite smoothly and then the Morticia kind of really sticks out a little bit, which is, like I said, um, kind of what I wanted. And so this swatch is actually 36 stitches wide and uh, about 30 rows deep in here, minus the garters at the top and bottom. But then this is the texture pattern that I'm planning on using on the front of the swatch, on the, of the sweater, sorry. Um, which it actually is um, the same texture pattern as I have in my changes shawl which I really really love in the section B and I really wanted to use it for something else as well and I think it would work really well in this particular garment for what I have in mind but this is also 36 stitches wide and if I hold the swatches up together you will see um, why this is important to swatch so not sure how well you can see that there. So the stockinette swatch ends here, but this swatch ends here. Even though they're the same stitch count width-wise, it's um, yeah, the stockinette is a lot of is a tighter gauge. That's the word. It's a tighter gauge than this one width-wise. And this one is actually is longer lengthwise. This one has 40 rows in the pattern section, minus the garter at the top and bottom. So it is longer anyway, but it's definitely wider. Um, gauge wise words are not working for me today when did they ever work for me <laughs> to be honest anyway so this was all swatched on 3.75 millimeter needles or us fives 
and I really like the gauge and drape of this fabric. So now I just have to work out the maths for that sweater before I can cast on and get started. So that'll be super fun to get going. Um, yeah, and that's it really. That's all I'm working on right now. Um, just a couple of plain vanilla socks and a couple of designs. So that's where, where I'm at right now. And hopefully I'm a little bit behind on some of my other design work. I still have a couple of patterns I need to release and um, a test knit I need to get out and a, um, a few other designs, basically the New York hat collection. I need to still write up all the patterns for that. And the ripple socks, I still need to write up the patterns for that. It's just been a whirlwind lately with Layla. She's been particularly difficult. Uh, she's been teething quite badly lately and she's been a bit, um, she's had a runny nose for the last week. So I'm not sure if that's a cold or something or if she just picked up a weird bug or if it's just this like prolonged teething effect thing going on. Like the, te the teeth are still coming through. She doesn't seem to be as grumpy about the teething now, but it's just, it's like she's hit the terrible twos early, but it's not quite as bad as terrible twos. It's, I think it's just frustration with her inability to communicate what she wants exactly. And sometimes not being understood is getting to her. So we're working on it and we're getting there, but um, slow progress, <laughs> slow progress sometimes. Anyway, that was a bit of a divergence from what we were talking about. I had a couple of other things to show for acquisitions. And actually, I should bring you back to this, which I forgot to mention about. The project bag was also sent to me by Kelsey, as well as the yarn. She very generously sent me this project bag as well, which is by Pink Hazel, Pink Hazel Bags. And uh, I think her website is www.pinkhazel.eu. If I remember, I will include a link to it as well. And it's 100% cotton. It's beautiful, beautifully made, really beautiful lining as well. It's, it's, it's huge. Like this bag comfortably holds the six skeins of Margot, which is a lot of yarn. That's 900 grams of yarn. It's almost a kilo worth of yarn in this bag. Um, and it fits and you can still cinch it closed completely at top. I mean, and there's still like space in the sides here. I mean, that's ridiculous. Um, it's a pretty decent sized project bag right there. If, you say, if, you, if I say so myself, it's got this fun little strap, drawstring, and it's really well made, very sturdy. It's not like some other drawstring bags that just don't support themselves. Like even without anything in it, this stands up very nicely on its own. Um, and it's also got a zippered pocket on the inside, in case you're wondering. Um, so yeah, really, really lovely construction. I've always had wonderful things about Pink Hazel Project bags. And, um, and yeah, it's really fun. I believe this pattern or this print rather is exclusive to Primrose Young Company as well. So I think if you want one of these bags, you have to purchase it from Primrose. I'm not sure if she's selling them on the website or if you can only buy them from events. I know she had them at Rhinebeck last year. So, so yeah, I'm not sure if you can get that exact bag, but um, I will try and post a link to information where you can get one. Um, <clears throat> then another thing I wanted to, that I got in the mail I say I got in the mail, but Perry got in the mail when he was in New York and brought back for me, was these two beautiful skeins of handspun. Now, before I left New York, I mailed some ha some fiber to my friend Sarah, who lives in Connecticut, and um, she's been in my vlogs a couple of times in the past. And she and I actually got in touch, like got to know each other on one of my trips to New York before we moved there. And we've just sort of stayed in touch and I consider her a really good friend. She's also an amazing spinner. So I had this, some of this lovely fiber that I just knew I was never gonna get around to spinning. And so I sent, uh, I asked her if she wouldn't mind if I sent her some fiber to spin for me. I just, at her own leisure, whenever she had time for it, like it wasn't, I, d I didn't have a deadline for it or when I needed it. And I just told her I would let her know when Perry was gonna be, or I was gonna be back in New York so she could just mail it to us um, in the US and not have to worry about international shipping. So I let her know that Perry was going to be back and she was like, great, I have a couple of skeins ready for you. Um, a couple of the fiber bumps are now ready. And so she sent them over and they are beautiful. Uh, first up is this one and the tag on is actually the wrong tag, but this is a, it was a rainbow uh, fiber braid of 100%, uh, I believe it was llama. I think it was llama. It was not alpaca, I'm pretty sure it was llama. Um, 
fiber and it's so soft so so soft and uh yeah she, uh, she's chain plied it so it's gonna keep it's gonna knit up as a gradient which is super fun this was a i believe this was a 100 gram or four ounce fiber braid but it got she got 248 yards out of it at a fingering weight so it's quite dense it's quite a dense yarn so i think this will make a really fun hat or maybe something for layla i'm not sure i kind of feel like maybe something for layla because it's so rainbowy and bright that it would work well as a kid's Thing. but I haven't decided what it's going to be maybe like a short sleeve open cardigan because then I could just knit it as long as it goes and just then end it wherever so it'd be like a little bolero, bolero style uh, cropped cardigan that might be quite cute actually so that's an idea for that one just thought I was just thinking out loud at that point um, and then there's this one this was this is from a moon rover fiber club from August 2015 this this was actually sent to me it's a Superwash Merino Nylon 85-15%. So I actually asked her if, uh, she asked me how I wanted this spun up. And I asked her if she wouldn't mind to sort of do a, I think what they call it, basically split the braid down the middle and then spin them up, spin them identically, as identical as possible, identically to um, get two matching gradient skeins of, of yarn. Let me see if I can show it to you now. And that's what she did. So there are two, two matching gradient skeins in here. And so I think one has uh, 263 yards and the other one has 250 yards. So she, so she did pretty good at getting these to be as matching as possible. And I look forward to knitting these into a pair of socks at some point soon. If I can, might do matching socks for me and Layla be really quite cute okay so that's the hand spun acquisitions so the last thing that came through in acquisitions was from the woolen homestead and that was that's the lovely um tiffany and her husband ethan who are the uh brains behind the brand and they um they dye yarn together well actually he dyes the yarn let me just double check what she said in here um Yes, so he dyes the yarn and she handles the podcast and social media. So they're a husband and wife team. So there's, they obviously have the Woolen Homestead podcast as well, which I have to add to my list. But um, she very kindly offered to send me some yarn to give away. But she also incredibly generously sent me some yarn for me as well. She also included some tea. And uh, this is her card, and their card and information. So it's the Woolen Homestead and they are on Etsy. I will have a link in the show notes as well. So she sent two skeins on their uh, sturdy sock fingering base. And they look very similar at first, but they are not the same. So this one is strawberry rhubarb pie, which is beautifully speckled. I mean, look at that speckling. That is gorgeous. And yeah, absolutely stunning. Beautiful spring color. And then we also have dragon egg which is equally stunning with these sort of like golden oranges. There we go. And yeah, just the detail and the speckling in that is amazing. Get that to show up nicely. So yeah, so I haven't decided. I think the dragon egg is the one I'm gonna keep and this one I will use for a giveaway just because it looks so springy and perfect for this time of year. So. Stay tuned for that. And that wraps up acquisitions. <laughs> it was more than I was expecting to have had to show this week, to be quite honest. But Perry brought back the primrose and the hands bun for me from the US. So that was something that um, I knew I was looking forward to arriving. And then <coughs> moving on to knit along and giveaway news. We have a few knit alongs running in the group. We have the 2018 Sock Club. We have the Mix and Match Cardigan Knit Along, which was my very first adult garment design. And um, we also have the Changes Shawl Knit Along going on in the group. Uh, the group is linked below this video. You can find all the relevant threads in the group where you can find all the details on how to take part in the Knit Alongs if you are interested. Um, I'm not gonna sit here and run through all that information again, just because it gets so repetitive and you can easily find it. Um, 
But what I will do is quickly try and show you all the prizes that I've allocated for each knit along, just because it's been a while since I've actually shown you any of the prizes, and I actually haven't shown you the prizes for these knit alongs, so I wanted to make sure to do that. Um, okay, so I'm just gonna sort that out and I'll be right back. Okay, so sort of just readjusted, and I just realized I don't actually have the prizes for the sock knit along. Um, giveaway prizes but I will be drawing prizes for the um for the sock knit long sort in the first towards the end of the first week of May anyway so I will sh I will just show you those when I'm drawing those prizes speaking of prizes actually um from the last prize winners video that I posted one of the winners did not get in touch with me so if you've entered any of my knit longs please head over and check out that video to see if you have one um, okay, so first up, the Mix and Match Cardi Knit Along, which is running until the 6th of May, so we only have a couple more weeks left for that one. Um, if you are entering into that, I've only got one prize, but it's a big one. So I have um, these two skeins of Audine Wools in the Prickly Pear colorway. So it's a superwash DK, but it's a uh, gradating yarn, so you can either use them together to get one long gradient, or you can start from one and then work across and then work towards the other to get like a gradient and then fading back out to the other colour. Um, really, really lovely, really squishy wool, really lovely, 263 yards or 215 metres in 100 grams. And if you want to hear more about it, you can um, check out the knit crate review I did for the April box, which is what this came from. But really lovely, very squishy, absolutely scrummy DK yarn, which I kind of wanted to keep for myself, but sharing the love. And then to go with that, I also have this uh, sock blank from Andre C Knits. This is back before she was doing her printed sock blanks. So this is almost like a vintage Andre C Knits sock blank in this beautiful purple gradient as well. So from the gray to this dark purple. So, so yeah, that'll be the prize for the mix and match cardigan knit along. And um, then for the changes shawl knit along, I have three prizes put together. And uh, yeah, so I will just show you what those are. First up, we have this um, Project Caddy from Lazarus Knitting Accessories. I'm not gonna open it up, but I did. Um, I do have a purple one that I have for myself that I use. It's actually back in New York. I don't have it here with me, but I find it really handy to keep like little mini skeins in or um, little bits and pieces of yarn. It's not particularly great for me to use as a project thing right now, just because of Layla's age and she keeps getting into my stuff. So I need something that I can zip up, but um, it would be really handy for like in the car knitting and stuff like that. Sort of like just a larger flexible yarn bowl. So that's pretty fun. And then I'm also gonna pair it with this skein of lovely yarn from Hiloko. This is on her opal sock, which is 50-50 silk superwash merino blend. And this is in the wild at heart colorway. So. I kind of thought these two go together quite nicely. So that's one prize. Then the second prize is this lovely skein of um, Strada Dye Works on her Oasis sock base in the Metalsome colorway, which is one of Amy's um, more popular colorways, I believe. And I, which she kindly donated to the podcast. And I'm gonna pair that with another Lazarus Knitting Accessories um, Super Flexible Knitting Blocking Wire Mix Set. So this is a mix set that comes with uh, four 35 inch blocking wires and three 70 inch blocking wires, as well as 30 um, T pins. So you get a whole bunch of flexible blocking wires. The best thing about these blocking wires is because they're flexible, they fold up, roll up quite small, and they fit into this tiny pouch. So storage is not a problem. Um, so that's gonna be the second prize. Um, and the third prize is gonna be these two skeins of Uru yarns. This is in the Peachy Queen colorway. This is Sugared Sock, so it's a Stellina sock yarn. It's a 70% superwash merino, 20% nylon, and 10% Stellina. So quite a high Stellina content. In the Peachy Queen colorway, and 399 yards in 100 grams. So I'm gonna see if you can see the sparkle in that. I'm not sure if that's showing up or not. I can kind of see it on screen. You can see it here a little bit better. Um, so there'll be two skeins of that for another winner. So that's, those are those three prizes. Okay, and the last sort of prize bundle that I have to show you guys is actually gonna be for a um, Podiversary giveaway. 
Now I'm a bit late for this, about a month late actually, more than a month late, um, but around the 16th of March was my three year podiversary. So I've actually been podcasting now for over three years, which is kind of crazy. And thank you so much to everyone who has stuck with me, um, whether you've been watching from the beginning or have only recently started watching, I really appreciate it. I wouldn't be doing this if, um, if it wasn't for you guys, so thank you so much. And as a gesture of thank you, I guess, I put together a little bundle of loveliness. Don't worry, it is <laughs> nothing to do with this. I'm just putting it in this bag. So, I have, let's grab everything out of the bag first. All the different little bits and pieces. Okay, so. First up, we have this lovely braid of fibre by uh, Porpoise Claire, and it's in it's the Shetland. The fibre is Shetland, and it is the roses colourway. So this is going to be one prize. And don't worry if you're not a spinner or you don't have anything to spin it with. I'm also throwing in a Turkish spindle. So if you've never spun before or you don't have a spinning implement or anything to go with the fiber, you will get one. And these Turkish spindles are really easy to use. They kind of just slot together and boop, there you go. Nice and ready to go. <laughs> um, and so yeah, the, the great thing about them is they do fold flat and they're very easily, easy to transport. So that's the first part of the prize. Then the second part of the prize is the yarn. So there'll be this skein of um, Got Fiber Twin Mummy Creations yarn on the in the Arid Luminescence colorway. It's an 80-20 Suprashmino nylon. It's super soft. I actually thought there was some cashmere in this at first when I first felt it. And it's 400 yards in the skein. And then we also have this skein of 100 Ravens yarn in the Wisdom, Justice and Love colorway. This is a DK weight. It's not actually worsted weight, even though it says worsted on it, it's DK weight. And I actually use this to knit those little um, bonnets for Layla with the pom-pom. That's this colorway. So that will also be in the price package. And then the little little bitty bits that go with it. I have one of these little notions cases. Um, it's actually a stationary case. So as you can see on here, there's a small scissor, uh, sellotape, um, stapler and staples. These are little tabbies, like sticky notes and um, highlighter in there. So all you need to do really is throw in some stitch markers and maybe a couple of darning needles and you basically got your own little notions kit there. You can always take the stapler out if that's not something you want to use, but everything else is pretty handy for a knitting project bag. Um, also have this little um, package, like trial package of um, tea pigs. It's licorice and peppermint, so that'd be nice and refreshing. Also have this little yarn skein enamel pin by um, Fibre and Brimstone and to wrap it all up we have this card I knit so I don't unravel and there's also a little button on the back as well um, which you can stick onto a project bag. So that is going to be the Podiversary prize package. I will open a thread for that on Ravelry. I have no idea what the prompt will be but I will have a prompt in the thread and I'll have that leave that open probably for two to three weeks there will be a date in the thread as well for when that will close and I will uh, draw the winner after that. Okay, so I feel like that's been enough chatter about prizes and stuff like that. I will hopefully have remembered to stick a timestamp at the beginning in case you're not interested in hearing about all of that so you can skip ahead to here. And now we're going to get stuck in to answering some of your guys' questions. So, jumping in with some questions now. The first question is from Reluctant Knitter, who I actually know in real life as well. So, uh, she says, the reluctant husband, his suggested name, not mine, um, would like to know, when making a sweater in pieces that needs to be seen together, why do you block it separately and then seam it together and not seam it together first and then block it? Block it. Seeing as I'm knitting my first sweater that is knit in pieces, my only answer to him was, because that's what the pattern instruction says to do. Um, he kindly asked me to ask a more experienced knitter and then, knitter, and then promptly said, ask Mina. <laughs> so that is what I'm doing. Um, <laughs> that really made me laugh. Thank you so much, um, Adrian. Um, but okay, so the reason for that, that I understand, and I, bear in mind, I've only knit one sweater that needs to be seamed, so I'm not exactly an expert in the, in the topic, but my, uh, 
the logic behind it, I believe, is that because when you block it, when you block something, the fibers relax and the stitches move about, I guess, a little bit to sort of um, even out your knitting tension and everything. So the idea is if you block it before you seam it, then your finished pieces are at their finished size, especially if you're working with something that's a superwash that you know is going to grow a lot. It would make sense to block it first. That way, when you seam it, you know everything's going to line up the way you want it to line up. Um, if you seamed it first and then blocked it, there's a chance that you know some the yarn might shift a little bit and it might look a little bit wonky. Your seams might not look as even. I get another example, another analogy for that would be, for example, cotton. If you're if you're sewing a garment out of cotton, it is or any fabric, it is always recommended that you wash the fabric first before you sew your garment because the fabric, especially, I say cotton because I know this for a fact, cotton tends to shrink and it's usually quite a noticeable difference before being washed and after being washed in terms of its finished size. So if you cut out your fabric pieces and sew up your garment and then wash it for the first time, there's a chance that the fabric could shift and could shrink and your seams could look funny and it could fit funny. But if you wash and dry it first and and then the fabric will have shrunk as much as it's going to shrink, then when you cut out your pieces and you seam it, seam it up, then you know that's going to be your finished size and there's not going to be any change in how the fabric behaves when it's washed again and again. So I feel like the same logic applies <laughs> in this situation. So um, that would be why the pattern tells you to block your pieces first before seaming. It also makes good sense because quite frankly if you are knitting something in pieces it is easier to block the pieces individually than it is as a finished thing. Um, so yeah I think that's why. <laughs> if anyone has a more eloquent answer to that question by all means please let us know. Um, the next one is from Be Ball Mum. And so these are all questions from like the end of March so I'm apologizing again for the delay in getting back to you guys. The next question is from Beeble Mum and she says, how are the boys doing? You must miss them and they must be missing you. Yes, I do. I absolutely miss them so much, but um, they are being very well cared for. Um, for pretty much the whole month of March, we had a friend living at our apartment. So um, they had someone there most of the time, which was great. And when she wasn't there, we had a pet sitter and we currently have a pet sitter who still goes around and she's very good with them. And we get video and photo updates every day on how they're doing. And Perry was actually back in New York recently for a, a week and a half or so, and so he was with them. They're doing really well. I had hoped to have been able to go back myself at some point, and the rain's picking up, so I hope that's not distracting. Um, so yeah, but it just hasn't worked out for me to be able to go back yet, which I'm quite sad about, but also um, it's just the way it is right now, and fingers crossed things will be sorted soon. Um, next up, we have a question from Fall Two Winter Baby Three, and she says, "I have the opportunity to visit London this summer, and I'm looking to pick up a sweater's worth of yarn. Can you give me a recommendation for a fantastic yarn shop? I really want something special to London. Ideally, something I can't get in the States. Thank you. Um, I'm not sure about specific yarn that you can only buy in London, but I know the only yarn shop that I really know of in London that I can recommend is Loop. The other one was." Um, I knit London, but I believe their store in London is now closed and they've moved somewhere else. But that's the only one I've been to is Loop. And uh, I know there are a couple of other uh, yarn shops in London, like Wild and Woolly is another one that I'm familiar with, but I haven't visited myself. So I would suggest checking those out and seeing if they have maybe what you're looking for. Then we have another question uh, from Charmous. And she says, hi Mina, I love your podcast and designs. I've just purchased your mix and match cardigan and I have a quick question. I'm considering knitting this in garter stitch instead of stockinette as I hate, as I hate purling. Can I just follow your instructions um, on the stockinette version or should I follow the textured version? Okay, um, first of all, it wouldn't matter which version you followed if you were just going to do the garter stitch because the gauge and everything is the same on both versions. It's just the actual instructions to work the textured pattern or the plain stockinette are slightly different. Um, but I personally would not recommend knitting that garment in garter stitch just because it would probably sag quite a bit. Garter stitch is a very interesting stitch because it's very stretchy compared to stockinette or a re reverse stockinette or purling um it's very stretchy and it can misshapen quite easily especially for a garment that's 
that big and quite heavy and drapey anyway um i personally wouldn't recommend it you can do it obviously there's nothing stopping you it's your knitting you can do whatever you want but um if you're asking me for my opinion i wouldn't recommend it i would recommend if you wanted to knit a cardigan in garter stitch find a pattern for a cardigan that's already designed in stock in garter stitch um and use that because then that would give you a, well probably give you a better outcome because the um so what i was thinking of the flexibility the stretchiness of garter stitch will be considered in that design um okay so the last question we have is from kida 1984 and she says now when you're in london at your parents house do you speak farsi with with them or english and are you teaching Layla farsi as well um and then she also says i'm looking at your old podcast from when you lived in Bahrain." Um, from when you lived in Bahrain when you lived there and went shopping or at the post office what language did they and you use English or something else okay so to answer your first question when I'm at home yes I do speak Farsi with my parents I also speak English with my parents um, to be honest my parents have been in the UK now for over 30 years so for them um, we kind of just like use both interchangeably <laughs> our sentences are half Farsi half English and it's just like alternating like some words come out in English and other words will be in Farsi Sometimes I'll have whole conversations with my family and then turn back to Perry and be like, ask him a question. He's like, I have no idea what you're talking about. That was not in English. <laughs> um, I forget sometimes what language I'm speaking. But um, as for Layla, I'm not, so, it's not so much that I'm actively teaching her Farsi in the same way that I'm not actively teaching her English. I speak to her in both languages. And my parents speak to her in both languages, so does my brother. Um, my parents try to speak to her in Farsi more. Um, just because quite frankly she's not going to learn it just from me my farsi's not that great for her to learn from me only um i still make plenty of mistakes but um you know we figure she'll learn farsi when she oh, sorry she'll learn english when she goes to school anyway so speaking farsi with her at home is um something we try to do as much as possible just to kind of help her pick up on that language as well um so there's that, <laughs> that answers that question. And then in terms of when we lived in Bahrain and what language we spoke when we went out, we just used English. English is the predominant language of business in the Middle East still. Um, but in Bahrain, more so than when we were living in Dubai, we still heard a lot of people using Arabic. Um, and it just depends where you were, to be honest. Um, in Dubai, majority of people, majority of places, you heard English almost always. Um, when you went shopping or at restaurants and stuff but in Bahrain you definitely heard Arabic a lot more um at the post office for example like I just spoke English I mean, anywhere I go I spoke English if um but if someone came along who spoke Arabic they would speak Arabic with them and that would be the way it would go um most people can speak both languages um who are from Bahrain because <laughs> most people can speak both languages at least to some extent so um that really wasn't an issue I feel like if we maybe had decided to stay there longer we probably would have made more of an effort to learn Arabic or some at least learn a bit more Arabic than we knew already so um but yeah so it wasn't really um not knowing the language didn't really affect our being able to live there if that makes any sense okay so I think I am now completely caught up on all of the questions. Thank you so much to everyone who has posted a question. If you have a question for me, then feel free to pop it on into the questions and suggestions thread in the group. And I will try to remember to answer it more um, within a more reasonable time frame than last time, or then this time. Whew. Anyway, so moving on now, since Layla is still asleep, I'm gonna make the most of this. Uh, what's been going on recently. Layla is now 14 months old and I generally just cannot believe it. Um, she is so opinionated and stubborn and just really strong-willed. Um, but I also kind of love that about her. As difficult as that can be, it is also incredibly adorable. Um, she loves being outside, which is really hard when it's raining, like it's just been raining now. So I had hoped to take her to the park this afternoon, but I don't think that's gonna happen. Um, we spent a lot of time outdoors last weekend. It was so lovely. We just had just really nice family time. To be honest, Saturday we went into central London. We went around Common Garden and Bloomsbury. And there's this really lovely children's playground uh, near Bloomsbury called uh, Corum's Field. And so that was really nice. It was just a really nice day out, to be honest. Just the three of us. And then on Sunday, we went down to Chiswick to visit with Perry's uncle and his family. And then we went over to Chiswick House. 
um, and they were having a tea festival <laughs> at Chiswick House, so we were like, great, could could this be any more British? This, it probably couldn't have, not if we tried. There was tea and cake and treats and everything everywhere. It was just another really lovely sunny day out. Um, Layla had a great time, we all had a great time there and uh, yeah, there was a short vlog actually from last weekend which I popped up on the channel. It should be the video before this one. If you feel like checking it out, it's less than 10 minutes. There's not really much talking at all. There's just a little bit of talk at the beginning to explain what the vlog's about. Um, but otherwise, it's just a vlog set to music. So I hope you'll enjoy that. And um, I probably will do more vlogs like that over the coming weeks as we do more things outdoors and like go places and see things and um, stuff like that. Just like nice short little weekend vlogs uh, set to music probably. Actually, this weekend might end up being one of these vlogs. It just depends what we end up doing. We have a couple of plans, but it's very weather dependent, so they may or may not happen. Um, yeah, so I'm actually in the attic. If you are a new viewer, you may not know this. I'm in our like attic, which has been converted into a room, but there's also a skylight. So um, it's just the rain hits that, and it's quite loud. So I really hope it's not too... Um, Annoying. I'm almost done, I promise. Um, anyway, so Layla's communication is getting really well. It's getting, coming on leaps and bounds. Uh, she's still not like saying proper words, but there again, because we are speaking two languages with her, and I know that children who speak, who are bilingual or speak m multiple languages um, growing up, they, don't, they tend to start speaking a bit later, so that's not really a concern. And um, she's definitely very good at the point in the grunt. She points and grunts at what she wants, and that's kind of her method of communication right now. That and just screaming if you don't do what she wants you to do. Um, so that's quite funny. And then the other like new thing really that's been going on um, in our lives is that Layla's actually started going to nursery. Um, there, there were several reasons for our decision to put her into nursery, and she's only going two days a week. But the idea behind that is right now, um, as you may have gathered from at the beginning when I mentioned how far behind I am on a lot of my design projects that uh, on my design work really that I don't have a lot of time to work on my business as it were as it were uh, when Layla was younger and less mobile it was just a lot easier to do things with her around now it's a lot harder for me to just find some time to sit down and work at my computer when she's around because you know one I want to be with her and two you know, she wants attention, which is perfectly normal and acceptable. And, you know, she just wants to do what I'm doing and get involved with whatever it is I'm doing. So she just wants to keep hitting my keyboard or playing with my yarn. And it just doesn't, it's not, it's not conducive to actually being able to do any actual work. So um, that was one reason. And the second reason was to socialize her with more children. We don't have a lot of people, we don't know a lot of people who have children who are of a similar age to Layla. And those that we do know don't live very close by. So we thought putting her into nursery will allow her to socialise with other children her age and will help build up her social skills. So it'll be good for her and it'll be good for us. You know, I feel like it's a balance between finding time for me to do work and also for her to have some independence and to learn and to be around other kids. So we decided to give it a go. So this is actually her first official week. Last week she had a couple of sessions, just shorter sessions, like just a couple of hours to see how she settles in. And she's selling in just fine. Honestly, um, I think it's more my issue than her issue. She was fine completely. I had uh, some um, issues initially, but it's fine now. To be honest, like the first time I dropped her off, she the teacher came to the door of the classroom and Layla was just like ready to go. She was like leaning in towards the teacher. Um, never met the woman before in her life, but she was ready to go. Uh, couldn't even wait long enough for me to take her shoes off before she wanted to get out of my arms and into the teacher's into the teacher's arms and that was it like she didn't even look back she did not even look back at me once after i let go of her so i was like okay then <laughs> clearly you're fine and yeah i went and i came back and um the teacher was like yeah she did really well she ate lunch which the teacher was really surprised about she said very few children actually eat food on their first couple of sessions when they go to the nursery because they're so like nervous or it's new and they don't feel comfortable or anything like that but not my child apparently <laughs> she really didn't seem bothered at all that I wasn't there but she was happy to see me every time I've been back to pick her up so that's nice um so why am I sharing this I guess just because it's gonna it's you know it's a bit of a change in our lives and I always do share what's going on and um and yeah I think this is a positive uh positive change 
and um, she seems to be enjoying it and thriving and doing well there, even though it's only been a couple of sessions so far. She's going again tomorrow, so we will see how that goes. And, um, and yeah, so fingers crossed that goes well, it keeps going well. <laughs> um, and, and yeah, I think that's really it in terms of news. Um, I'm hoping the two days a week that she does go to nursery will mean I'll have a little bit more time to work on my designs and stuff. And as such, it means I'm not so worried about trying to get work done on the weekends, which, mean, which means we can have more family time like we had last weekend. So um, it's all swings and roundabouts, I guess. Oh, the only other thing to mention was my knee. Thank you so much to everyone who uh, left me such kind comments about my knee after I mentioned it a couple of weeks ago. I did actually manage to go see a physiotherapist and I'm seeing a physiotherapist now for my knee. And what they've concluded is a couple of things that are causing the pain it's causing the pain so what it is it's to do with my kneecap rubbing along uh, the cartilage behind the kneecap rubbing along some other muscles that's causing the pain or something um i can't remember the technical word for it anyway he said it's caused by a couple of things one is weakness in my thigh muscles ironically and the second is hypermobility in my joints now I knew I had hypermobility in my ankles because I twisted my ankles so many times growing up. It was actually to the point that it was a bit ridiculous how many times I sprayed my ankles. And um, and he was all just like checking my joints and he said I had some hyper, um, hypermobility in my wrists and basically it just means you're extra flexible, a little bit more so than the average. So I have it in my wrists and in my knees and my ankles apparently. I don't have it in my elbows. <laughs> Um, I'm not sure what that would look like though, but anyway, that's what he told me. So I've got some exercises for that now and it's already starting to have a bit of an impact. So that's always good news. And um, yeah, so there's that. Um, I think I'm just going to leave it at that now. I, I feel like I've just rambled a lot. So I hope this was, um, as always, I hope it was coherent and I hope you enjoyed it. And thank you for sticking with it throughout the rain noises and my slightly rambly nature anyway thank you so much for joining me i hope you all have a lovely end to your week and a lovely weekend and i will be back soon all right take care bye